back on the surf again. There's a couple goals that we want to do today. It's a game plan, but we may or may not achieve all of them. First goal is to catch a striped bass. Second goal, based on the last video, you guys kind of like that instructional stuff, where to find them and everything like that. So if we hook up on a striper today, we'll send the drone out and analyze the water, point out some of the structure that that fish came from. Another thing we're gonna do hopefully today, if we do catch a striper or one of the guys catches a striper, we are gonna make striped bass karage, which is a Japanese dish over rice. It's a marinated striped bass, fried. So that's gonna be really good too. So those are the goals. But let's just see if we can hook up on a striped bass, we'll take an aerial view of the water, which is gonna be really hard to do because when you hook up on a striper out here on the surf, you wanna get right back in there. So it's gonna take a lot of discipline. Let's see if we can do it. But for you guys, it'll be worth it. Let's go. All right, so here's the first place I'm fishing. I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but there is a sandbar, but it's far enough out where there's a deep channel between the shore and a big sandbar. If we can get something here, I'll definitely show it to you guys on the drone. But the channel is definitely big enough to where these fish could be in amongst that hole. Try throwing in this deep sloppy stuff right here. All right, so since there's no sandbars between the open ocean and the shore, there's nothing to slow down the wave force from breaking right on shore. So this is this whole open pocket. And on each side, there's a bit of a peninsula that jets out on this side and on that side so this is all the open area and that's allowing the waves to beat the ground right at shore which unearths the sand crabs so this is definitely a better probability area than we walked past earlier so it's definitely worth a few casts we'll give it a shot you definitely catch them in the middle of that spot but i like to fish all the way to the edges of those openings we'll call this an opening and usually at these openings there's not as much seaweed which is nice because the sandbars aren't keeping all the seaweed in one place and here's the edge of that opening that i was talking about earlier and it's that peninsula that goes straight out and that way and you can tell because the surface of the water really tells you about the topography under the water so when you see bubbles and waves breaking because all that force is being pushed up that's how you know it's a little bit shallow, more shallow than the surrounding area. We've caught them amongst that as well. Nope, nobody home. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, we arrived at peak low tide at 6.30. High tide's gonna be close to one o'clock, but the wind is really calm today. It should peak out about eight, but it's slowly going up from two miles an hour to five typically but then it'll peak at eight miles an hour is what it says kind of close to noon so as high tide is peaking it's going to be the windiest all right so what you guys are seeing now is basically two sandbars and a channel in between. You can really see by the bubbles on the surface that, well, foam on the surface that it's pretty shallow in those areas, creating a channel where those fish might be. Now, if we were to back the camera up a little bit, you guys can tell that even between shore and that first sandbar, there's just a little bit of space so not a huge likelihood that they'll be swimming in this channel right here at all. And essentially the whole one mile stretch of beach is like this at this point. There's really maybe only two openings that we'll be able to fish. And right here you can see there's 
a point that juts out and there's foam above it and then on the left side you see the same thing but right in the middle is an open channel to the open ocean and that is a channel that they can get in and out of and get into those the skinny water and then be able to get back out deep so that's the type of structure that we look for and kind of cast around hoping that they're there at the same point that we're actually fishing it but as you can see right here there's foamy water right next to shore and there's just a small channel between shore and the fo foamy water so the likelihood of them being there is not very high so you, we usually pass these types of areas walk right past them so right here where our friends are fishing there's a channel just big enough to maybe hold some fish but at least there's an opening to the far right of the screen where they can come in from the deep and start probing that pocket but again it's it's low tide right now so maybe as the tide comes up that'll all start to fill in with water and become a good spot to target them With the tides coming in, hopefully the bite turns on. The water's looking better and better. What color are you throwing? They're not that far. I think when the tide comes in, we'll be we'll be in good shape. Let it load up. Let it load up. Oh! Yahoo! Nice! That was just right there. I know, man. Like, you gotta let the law road load, load up. <laughs> and it's on the Papa Leroy rod. That's right, my first one. Dude, that's a good one. My first fish. My first scraper. No way. On the sardine glow? Yeah. Sick! Oh, he's mad. He's got a whole face full of hooks. Nice fish, Leroy. Nice fish. This is the exact spot you caught your 28 inch or two. Really? Yeah. It's a big one. Yeah. There he comes. Oh, that is a big one. Oh, Holy. There it is. Right there, man. Nice fish, Leroy. Nice fish. That's 26, I think, all day. I barely had him. Look at that. That's nice, Leroy. That's a good fish. On the Papa Leroy, the Papa Leroy rod. rod. Thank you, Charleston. I think he's legal. Yeah. I definitely think it's illegal. Nice. Solid Woo. fish. All right, so as promised, we're going to send the drone in the air to take a look at this place so you guys can see the structure, the depth, yeah, he went, what we're looking at. We were just talking about the... Uh, Edward says he shouldn't be out that far in that cast, and I wasn't out that far, and sure enough, he hit it. Let's measure this guy, and then we're gonna send the drone in the air. Get some aerials of this area. Uh, I'd say he's 26. 26? Yeah. 26. Oh! 27 and a half! Oh, almost wow. the same as my 27 one. and a half. Yep. Same size as the one that he caught a year ago. Awesome, Leroy! What a beast. All right, guys, as promised, this is the aerial shot of exactly where Leroy caught that fish. Leroy was standing right here, and I was standing right where Anthony is casting. And he hooked up 
right next to that sandbar that's right in front of Anthony that's kind of perpendicular to the beach. You can really tell because there's quite a bit of foam. That's kind of a shallow spot. And if we move the camera up a bit, we'll actually be able to see that there's a little bit more structure as well as a big sandbar on the other side. On the top of your screen, you're gonna see that sandbar. And what's happening is to the left of the sandbar, there's an open channel that the striped bass can come in and out of. And that's where that fish is coming in. So there's a big sandbar and then it kind of tapers off heading towards the shore. But that's exactly where Leroy just caught that fish. Again, this is taking so much discipline to show you guys the wave action. That's another thing, is the wave action is a few seconds in between. So let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 so it's about a 13 second set and you can really see that open water where Leroy hooked up on that fish is right next to where the foamy water is so there's definitely some good structure on the beach so hopefully this video helps you guys out seeing an aerial shot of it if you do think that this is going to help you guys in terms of conceptualizing where the fish are leave a thumbs up Definitely appreciate all of the support that you guys give the channel. So this is the spot that I was showing you guys from the aerial footage. This is exactly where Leroy caught that fish. And you can see the shallower perpendicular sandbar that's going out shallow. And then way, 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 way back there is that this other sandbar that I mentioned earlier. Right there, now that it's breaking. Ooh, nice fish. Good fish. That's a good size too. Striper karage. <laughs> Striper karage coming right up. <laughs> Look at that. That's all sand crabs in there. And eggs. Look at that. Striper eggs. Yeah, this guy was gorging himself. Oh, sand crab. Look at that. Sand crab time. Dark meat is what gives it kind of that oily flavor. So there's no bones in there. I don't feel any. At least I don't think so. No more bones in my fish. We got bite-sized pieces. It doesn't take long to cook. Then we're gonna marinate it for half an hour. All right, so we're gonna put, I'm cheating a little bit. We got a little bit of ground ginger, so we, we can do fresh grated or just regular. I'd probably put like about, eh, probably like a teaspoon of that in there. Okay. This is roasted garlic. Likewise, we want to put about maybe about a teaspoon. Okay. Fresh brown black pepper. soy sauce probably about probably about a teaspoon of soy sauce okay we're gonna mix it together we want this to all take in the flavor so we're gonna make sure it's coated pretty good okay and then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it marinate for about a half an hour. And then we'll continue with the process after that, after it marinates. Karage. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix the batter Stripa. up. Karage. Oh. Yeah, so we're not just having karage. Karage. We're not having just that. We're, we're making it a thing. Like, that's what we encourage you guys to do too. Like, we, we're kind of making this a regular thing. Oh, and the wife's. Look at yeah, the, look. This is the wife's club. Look. 
The wife's club. The wife's club. The wife's club. It's good for the soul, not so good for the waistline. But no, it's it is. Good for the waistline. Yes. But we'll make the karage. We'll make it, but just to show you the spread. We got some. Uh, this is just the beginning. Beef ribs. We have the linguisa inside on the Santa Maria style grill. Uh, shrimp skewers. Sk shrimp skewers are coming up. We got the chicken. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the fish has been marinating in that for about, I don't know, about an hour. You know, you can marinate it as long as you want, but we let it marinate for about an hour. So this is a, um, what we call katakuriko, which is a Japanese potato starch. Not corn starch, but potato starch. And then what we're going to do is just add a little bit of that in there to the, it's already got like a little bit of, like a little bit of sauce in there because the salt in the soy sauce is making some of the the liquid from the fish, you know, drawing a little bit of the moisture out of the fish fillet. So it kind of makes like a little bit of a sauce. And then what we do is we just dredge that in there with the potato starch till it, till you get a like a, a light coating. It doesn't have to be a thick coating. Almost like a consistency like peanut butter. Let me see that. But just a little bit lighter, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll let that sit for a little bit and then we'll just deep fry it until it's done. 360 degree oil. Oh, for me? Yes, sir. Para mí. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good? Striped bass. Karage. Mmm. Yes. Yeah. You can really taste the garlic and ginger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put a lot in there. So. And it's since it's marinated in the soy sauce, it and then really than has that flavor. More flavorful. Than it. Dang. We can do it as I want more. But this over a bet of rice. Mmm. Mmm. So we haven't even had dinner yet. And this is all the cut I gave it. <laughs> it's pretty much an appetizer. It didn't, didn't happen as we thought it was going to. Human 4x4 back in action. After one year hiatus, we're back on the sand. Why was there a one year hiatus? Why? It's Corona. Oh. Corona slowed us down. But we fished during Corona, didn't we? Not like this. We were pounding the sand. Zero miles on the sand. All right, we're about to switch that up. Before I caught this, yep. he said, this is the exact same spot you caught that last one, Leroy. I yeah. said, no. And Mario sat in the same exact spot. I he was. was like, you know what, this is my spot. And I was then... sitting down when he landed this too, or when he hooked up. Yeah, I just was like, like no, just like this isn't the same shot. Neighbor said, yeah, no, this is the Deja exact vu, same Except spot. I couldn't catch the 25s. I don't know, I was just swimming around and I decided to look over to my left and I saw this, this, this thing and I saw I bit down on it and then later I saw that guy. <laughs> Trimming my body up. I don't know what else to say. Don't put me on film, bro. Don't put me on Stop, bro. Stop, bro. Stop. Hold up, bro. Hold up. No. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Char lemons. Char yeah, lemons here, charred. Why do we char them? Why do we char? Oh, they're juicier. Brings out the juice. Yeah. Brings out the flavors. Makes it more and concentrated. It, it, it enhances. Now all you need is the little netting that goes around it. Oh, then, then the seeds. So the seeds. So the seeds don't come out. Yes. Damn. See, an OG chef. I didn't do these. I would have cut them. Yeah. I would have taken the knife and flicked all oh, the seeds oh, okay. out and then charred oh. them. But you're right, yeah. the netting is, is proper. It's proper. 